Creating mini stars inside reactors like this is one of the greatest technological challenges humanity has ever faced. Get it right and it holds out the potential for producing almost unlimited supplies of energy pretty much forever. It happened inside a giant machine in the quiet countryside of Oxfordshire. For just five seconds, humanity managed to do something that once belonged only to the stars. Temperatures soared beyond 150 million degrees, ten times hotter than the heart of the sun itself. And at that moment, inside the jet fusion reactor, scientists held a miniature star on Earth. Not a dream. Not science fiction. A real burst of fusion power. It wasn't enough to light a city. In fact, it could only power about 60 kettles for tea. But that didn't matter. What mattered was the principle, the demonstration that nuclear fusion, the process that fuels every star in the universe, could be recreated and sustained here on Earth. A milestone that scientists have been chasing for decades, proving that the laws of physics that light up the cosmos could, for a fleeting moment, be controlled by human hands. To grasp why this is such a breakthrough, you have to step back and look at what powers the universe itself. Every star you see in the night sky shines because of nuclear fusion. Deep in their cores, unimaginable heat and pressure fuse hydrogen atoms into helium. That process releases staggering amounts of energy, enough to keep stars burning for billions of years. For generations, scientists have dreamed of replicating that process here on Earth, not to create light in the sky, but to generate electricity, to power cities, to provide energy without pollution, without carbon, without fear. But harnessing fusion has proven to be one of the hardest scientific challenges ever attempted. Nuclear fission, which most reactors use today, is relatively straightforward by comparison. Take a heavy, unstable atom like uranium. Split it apart and energy pours out, along with radioactive waste that can last for thousands of years. Fission works, but it is dangerous, politically controversial, and forever tied to the spectre of nuclear weapons. Fusion is different. Instead of splitting atoms, it forces them together. Take two forms of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. Press them close enough, and they will fuse into helium. The result is clean energy, a burst of power, and only short-lived radiation that fades quickly. In principle, it is safe, clean, and nearly limitless. The fuel for fusion, deuterium, can be extracted from ordinary seawater. Tritium can be bred inside reactors from lithium. Humanity would never run out of it. A single glass of water contains enough deuterium to power an entire person's energy needs for a lifetime if fusion could be made practical. On paper, the dream looks perfect. In practice, it borders on impossible. Hydrogen nuclei are stubborn. They repel each other with immense electromagnetic force. To force them together, you need to mimic the extreme conditions at the core of the sun. That means temperatures of more than 150 million degrees Celsius. At those temperatures, matter doesn't behave normally. It becomes plasma, a strange, seething state where electrons are stripped from atoms and particles race about at incredible speeds. To confine this plasma, to stop it from touching the walls and destroying the machine, scientists use magnetic fields stronger than anything else on Earth. The donut-shaped device that holds it is called a tokamak. Inside, plasma whirls like a controlled storm, glowing with a ghostly light, hotter than anything the planet has ever known. The idea of the tokamak first emerged in the Soviet Union in the 1950s, during the Cold War, when both the United States and the Soviet Union were racing to turn the power of the hydrogen bomb into something useful. For decades, progress was slow. Each experiment managed to hold plasma for a fraction of a second, then lost control. Machines grew larger and more complex. From Princeton to Moscow, from Japan to Germany, laboratories tried to tame the storm inside the magnetic bottle. Many outside the field began to call fusion a fantasy. Always promised, never delivered. It became a running joke. Fusion is 30 years away, and always will be. And yet, step by step, progress continued. The Joint European Taurus, or JET, 
became the flagship of Europe's fusion effort in the 1980s. Built in Oxfordshire, it was designed to push fusion further than ever before. For decades, it has tested different shapes, fuels, and control methods. Scientists came to JET from across the world to learn how to handle plasma, how to keep it stable, and how to edge closer to ignition. In early experiments, JET managed to fuse deuterium and tritium and produce real fusion energy, but only in bursts. For years, the question was whether it could ever sustain the reaction long enough to prove that the principles worked. And in this latest experiment, JET finally delivered a record-breaking result. Five seconds of controlled fusion, producing 59 megajoules of heat energy, the most ever achieved in a laboratory. To the outside world, that number might sound trivial. 60 kettles of tea? That's nothing. But in the world of fusion, it was monumental. It showed that the reaction could be stabilized, that plasma could be kept steady, that the very fuel ITER plans to use, deuterium and tritium, behaved just as the models predicted. JET's result was a blueprint for the future, a proof of concept that humanity is not chasing an illusion. That future now rests on ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor under construction in southern France. ITER is the largest science project on Earth, involving more than 30 countries, including the European Union, the United States, China, India, Japan, Russia and South Korea. It is a machine so vast that parts are shipped from across the globe and assembled like pieces of a gigantic puzzle. When complete, it will stand taller than a 10-story building, weigh as much as three Eiffel Towers, and generate magnetic fields powerful enough to lift an aircraft carrier. ITER's goal is simple in words, nearly impossible in execution, to produce more energy from fusion than is put in. While JET and all reactors before it consumed more power than they produced, ITER is designed to change that. Its target is to generate 10 times the energy needed to heat the plasma. If it succeeds, it will be the first true demonstration of net energy gain from fusion, the moment the balance tips in humanity's favor. Other players are not waiting for ITER alone. In China, the East reactor has broken records of its own, holding plasma for minutes at incredible temperatures. In the United States, projects at Princeton, MIT, and several private companies are exploring compact designs, high-temperature superconducting magnets, and novel approaches that could leapfrog traditional tokamaks. Billionaire-backed startups like Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Hellion, and Tay Technologies are racing to find faster, cheaper ways to achieve the same goal. Even giant corporations are taking notice, seeing fusion not just as science, but as the energy industry of the future. The race to build the first working fusion power plant has become global, a 21st century competition that could reshape civilization. Why does this matter so much? Because the prize is staggering. Fusion offers what no other source can. Imagine a world where energy is not scarce, not polluting, not dangerous, but abundant and clean. Imagine cities powered for centuries without burning coal, oil, or gas. Imagine an energy source with no smoke, no smog, no carbon dioxide, no climate change. Imagine a power plant fueled by water, running almost forever, producing electricity without fear of meltdown, without mountains of radioactive waste. The implications are profound. Cheap desalination of seawater for thirsty cities, limitless electricity for developing nations, clean fuel for future spacecraft that may one day travel between planets. Fusion could be the backbone of a civilization that expands into space. It could be the foundation of humanity's future for thousands of years. And yet, here is the sobering truth. Fusion is not ready today. JET's five seconds of Starfire were historic, but they were only five seconds. ITER will not even begin full experiments until the 2030S. Even if it works perfectly, commercial fusion plants may not appear until the 2040S or 2050S. That is too late to stop the climate crisis unfolding now. The next 10 years are critical for cutting carbon emissions, and fusion will not arrive in time to rescue us. Wind turbines, solar panels, hydropower, existing nuclear fission, and energy efficiency will have to bear that burden. 
but this does not make fusion pointless. On the contrary, it makes it even more essential. Because while we fight the near-term battle against climate change with the tools we have, we must also prepare for the long term. If humanity survives the crises of this century, it will need energy sources to last into the next. Fusion may not solve our problems today, but it could prevent new ones tomorrow. It could ensure that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren live in a world where energy is not a weapon, not a crisis, but a birthright. The scientists at JET know this. When asked why it takes so long, they admit it is hard, harder than almost anything else in science. Plasma is unstable. Machines are complex. Progress is slow. But they believe it is worth it. They believe it is necessary. Because to stop trying would be to accept that the stars will forever remain beyond our reach. Fusion is not a fantasy. It is real. It has been lit, measured, and sustained, even if only for a few seconds. Step by step, experiment by experiment, humanity is learning how to capture starfire. The five seconds in Oxfordshire were not the end of the story. They were the beginning of a new chapter, one where the power of the sun may someday shine not only above us, but also here on Earth, safely contained in machines of our own making. And when that day comes, even if it takes decades, even if it arrives too late to solve today's problems, it will be one of the greatest triumphs in human history. Because for the first time, we will not just look up at the stars for warmth and light, we will hold one in our hands, and that, even if we must wait a lifetime, will be worth it.